today. I'm taking the world's most luxurious river cruise for 72 hours across three countries. I'm staying in the best and largest suite on board, complete with a living room, two bedrooms, and a huge marble bathroom. Of course, this doesn't come cheap at over $15,000, but you're invited along for the journey. From fine dining in the restaurants to the opulent spa facilities and spending quality time with my dad. With that, let's pick up my story at the beginning of our voyage in Budapest, Hungary. We've just been collected from our hotel in the old town and are being transferred down to the river Danube where our journey begins. Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. We're about to go and get on board my very first river cruise. And it's not just any river cruise, this is the Riverside Mozart, which just so happens to be the world's most luxurious. The Riverside Mozart is one of the largest vessels on the river and over double the width of most competing cruisers. She's about 400 feet in length and by comparison 100 or more so than the height of the Statue of Liberty in this highly accurate diagram. Stepping on board, I'm initially presented with a welcome champagne as I'm led over to the front desk for check-in formalities. I'm promptly issued my personalised room key and directed to my suite. We're currently here, near to the ship's centre, and to get to our room, we'll need to take a short walk on the same floor towards the stern. Here we are then, Suite 222, located on the starboard side of the vessel. Without any more to say, let's head inside and explore the best room on board. Well, welcome on board, and most importantly, welcome back to the channel, Dad. Hi. <laughs> How are you, right? I'm good, at least it's not a train. <laughs> I know, it's going to be quite interesting, isn't it? We've got, what, three, four days on here? So. Yeah, see how we get on. Well, you might be throwing me overboard, to be honest. <laughs> The two-bedroom owner's suite is 880 square foot, which is positively gigantic in the world of river cruising. First up, the lounge with comfy armchairs, ideal for reading the coffee table books, which ordinarily never get opened. And yes, you do see correctly, there's a marble fireplace, which does actually work, kind of. This opens out into one of our three French balconies. Back inside, we also have a dining room, complete with a chandelier. Here you can order room service meals to be served anytime, via your butler, reachable by in-room phone or by WhatsApp 24-7. Should you have guests over, there's a half bathroom adjacent to the living room, though you'll probably want to show off the master one, just you wait. Next, we'll head to my wing, with a huge walk-in wardrobe. Adam, our fantastic butler, did offer to unpack for us, but given I travel with so little, it really isn't necessary. Of course, next door is the master bedroom with a comfy king-size bed along with my luggage which was sent ahead of our check-in formalities. My favourite though is the bathroom, beautifully appointed in marble. Oh, and of course, there's a Toto Japanese toilet. We're not finished though, there's a second bedroom, Dad's. With the same king-size bed, comfortable living area and smaller ensuite bathroom, all in all, it's fair to say I'm very impressed. At this point, we're informed it's time for our departure and not wanting to miss the spectacle, let's head out to the very top of the ship on deck four for the best views. We'll explore the facilities up here, such as the rooftop lounge and pop-up bar in just a minute. But for now, let's get on our way. Our 72 hour voyage up the Danube begins now. The highlight of our departure from Budapest, of course, is the incredible Hungarian Parliament building, though I still think this comes into its own at night. Some cruise itineraries actually depart later for this very reason. Absolutely spectacular. Well on our way now, let's head back down to our suite, as there's some unfinished business to take care of. So, Dad, I think it's time to kick this off properly with some champagne. Uh, yeah, sooner the better. We'll have a glass. Oh, I thought I was going on there. <laughs> Tattinger Prelude Champagne is provided complimentary as a welcome amenity, along with a few canapes to whet our appetites for dinner, which is just around the corner. We enjoy the next hour or so relaxing on our French balcony, watching the world go by. Usefully, riverside cruisers provide binoculars in the room, which aside from making Dad look like an avid birdwatcher, allow for an added perspective as we glide slowly along. 
Right, with the sunlight beginning to dwindle, I think it's nearly time for dinner. We should probably go and get ready. Dinner this evening is served in the Waterside restaurant. This is the main dining room on board, though there are multiple venues which I'll share with you throughout our cruise. We're led over to our reserved table by the window. Let's take a look at the seven course menu then. One thing you'll notice very soon is you won't be going hungry at all on board. For our appetizers, Dad goes for the cured alpine salmon with a citrus salad and dill mustard sauce, whereas I opt for the beef carpaccio served with chili mayonnaise and rocket. Next up is the soup course and we both go for the baked onion soup with Austrian cheese croutons. Worried for space, we opt out for pasta course and instead head straight onto our mains. Dad has gone for a local special, catfish caught in the Danube. And I go for a Trek trendy staple, a bock beer marinated flank steak served with a warm cabbage salad and homemade curry barbecue sauce. Absolutely delicious. Finally, dessert. Dad has the bread and butter pudding with vanilla sauce whilst I opt for the rich mango tiramisu. It's true to say we're both beat by this point, so there's no room for the cheese course. However, our server is insistent on some truffles to conclude our meal. To finish our first evening suitably, we'll head to the Palm Court for a nightcap, along with some entertainment. It's worth noting that all of our drinks are included on board, though you'll need to pay extra for some of the premium spirits and wines. David, our Hungarian pianist, entertains us on the grand piano as we enjoy a drink or four. Upon returning to our room, it's been turned down for us, and the best part, the fire is now lit. However, as you can probably tell, and for safety reasons, these are not real flames. Well, back from a lovely evening on board the Riverside Mozart. I mean, we had an incredible meal, didn't we? Just we did. So much. <laughs> I'm full. We need to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> the next day. Good morning. Bright and early and I think it's time for this morning's first caffeine hit. Usefully there's an in-room Nespresso machine, however it's worth noting that your butler can bring you freshly made espresso based drinks whenever you want. Let's head back to the Waterside restaurant then, where a buffet spread is put on from 7 to 9.30. Choose anything from a fry-up to fresh meats and pastries, along with made-to-order omelettes. I however want to check out the breakfast menu which is also available. I'm happy to see that one of my all-time favourites, the Eggs Benedict, is in pride of place on the menu. So Dad opted for the create your own omelette, whereas of course I enjoy my eggs Benny. It's time we take a proper look around the ship, but just before it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor. Every video people ask, how can so many travel like that in times like these? Well, all these luxury travellers know the key is having your money work for you, even when you're on the road. A portfolio, second property, brokerage account, you name it. But whatever your plan is, this year has been incredibly challenging to say the least. Not only half of Americans making six figures are living paycheck to paycheck, they're pulling from savings and retirement accounts to cover basic necessities. Traditional investments are still recovering from their worst year since the 2008 financial crisis, but the sponsor of today's video, Masterworks, have already distributed over $45 million in net proceeds to their investors by giving them access to one of the most unique assets on the market, fine art. Investing like this was once exclusive to millionaires, but Masterworks has opened the market, so you don't need millions of dollars 
developers or art expertise. And as I said, they've paid out tens of millions in total. In fact, every sale thus far has handed back a profit. So it's no surprise that Masterworks has 700,000 plus users already and have to control signups with a waitlist to manage demand. But you can skip the waitlist immediately when you use my link down in the description below. Right, let's start by taking a look around the outside decks. First up is Deck 4, also known as Vista. It's the highest and it's where we watched our departure from yesterday. It's a lovely open space to relax in, weather permitting, with a variety of sunbeds and comfy chairs dotted around the deck. The real party piece is the pop-up bar. Why is it a pop-up, you ask? Well, due to height restrictions and in order to navigate low bridges along the river, this can be adjusted in height as necessary. Deck 4 is also home to the bridge, which equally can be adjusted for height. Let's head down to Deck 3, named Riverside, which plays host to the promenade deck. This wraps around the ship's entirety, and it's great to up that step count whilst on the water, especially given the amount of food I'm eating. Down further still, we'll head to Deck 2, Seahorse. This is the same level as our suite, however it's also home to one of the ship's most luxurious features, the spa. Featuring a spectacular swim against the current indoor pool, alongside an inviting hot tub. Thanks to the positioning of the spa facilities in the bow, you're treated to incredible water level views out over the Danube as you glide along. Other provisions include steam and sauna rooms, alongside private rooms for paid for treatments. It's time to head back up to deck three, as we have a strudel appointment, all will become clear very shortly. This is in Palm Court, where we enjoyed some entertainment last night. It's a beautiful space with ample seating for all guests on board to enjoy the various activities put on throughout the voyage. It's also home to the only grand piano on the river, only possible due to the sheer size of our ship. Anyway, I digress, it's strudel time. We're going to learn how to make this traditional Austrian-German delicacy with a lesson from the head chef on board. Well, there we go then, and not wanting to wait 40 minutes, here's one they made earlier. So, after that live demo of how to make a strudel, well, first of all, Dad, do you reckon you'd be able to do that? Easily. Easily? What, yeah. you mean, you honestly think that you, oh, you'll be I, able to do not, that? Not a problem at all. But... <laughs> it's still warm, it's just out the oven. Right, here we go. Go, a taste test. A few moments later. What's it like? Happily. Happily, love yeah. it. With that, we're about to arrive into our first stop of the trip, and indeed a new country, Slovakia. This is the capital Bratislava. I've actually never been to Slovakia before, so I'm excited to explore a bit with Dad. Now, we do have a selection of excursions included, however, on this occasion, we'd prefer to do our own thing. First up, we'll head to the UFO Bridge, offering a fantastic view out over the city and indeed the river. None of us quite have the bottle to brave the skywalk this afternoon though. After a brief walk around the city centre, we'll head back on board the ship for lunch. Lunch will be served in the aft restaurant on deck 3. It's worth noting that for those that need assistance getting between floors, there's one elevator on board. I reference this because many riverboats don't have this due to their size restrictions. The aforementioned aft restaurant is actually known as the Blue Deli, and it's nice to have a change of scenery from the ship's main dining facility. Let's start with a strawberry lemonade then, as my order is placed. I know, I know, no DC, it's a travesty. After being presented with some delicious warm bread, our mains are served. Dad has gone for the salmon Caesar salad, whilst I've opted for, well, Caesar, Caesar salad. <laughs> Given the amount of food we've eaten so far, it's nice to have a lighter lunch. Well, saying that our server did insist on some petty fours to close, and the Nutella and banana milkshake really caught my eye, whoops. With lunch out of the way, I guess I'd better answer the question to those that have indulged in a few too many petty fours. How to offset their gluttony? Well, I'm glad you ask. 
there's a well-equipped gym, with anything from bikes to machines and free weights. It also feels rather peculiar looking out the window as you're in line with the water level here. Anyhow, now we must check out one of the other rooms on board. It turns out that one of the penthouse suites is unoccupied, so we must take a look. At over 300 square foot, this suite is ideally placed for those wanting space, but not the overindulgence of an entire apartment, i.e. our owner's suite. Complete with a spacious living area, walk-in wardrobe and a marble bathroom. Right, so now we've mastered the art of making a strudel, how about mixology in the form of cocktail making? This will be taking place in the Cove Piano Bar, adjacent to Palm Court on Deck 3. We'll be learning how to make the Italian cocktail, the Negroni, consisting of one part gin, one part vermouth and one part Campari. I think it's fair to say Dad's enjoying his. With the other passengers all back from their excursions, the sun is setting over the city and therefore it's time to leave Bratislava and indeed Slovakia behind. I definitely feel I've got unfinished business here, so I'll certainly be back for a longer visit next time, but for now we'll set sail bound for Austria. One outfit change later and it's time for dinner. Now for this evening there are two options. One is the vintage room which can be arranged at an additional charge. It's essentially a private dining experience with a bespoke menu curated around your tastes. I think this would be ideal if you were traveling as part of a group or a large family. I was half tempted to do it with dad and I seated at opposite ends of the table, but the other option twisted my arm, the Mozart Bistro and it's tapas night. This is served in two courses, firstly a cold tapas and then a hot one. Given it's our last night on board, I make it champagne o'clock whilst add ops for some red wine. The first course of cold tapas consists of oysters with caviar, beef tartare and marinated vegetables. It's absolutely delicious. Next up is the hot tapas of roasted jumbo shrimp, herb marinated beef, fried wild forest mushrooms and pulled pork sliders. All in all, a fantastic spread. Yet again, I'm full to burst. The night is not over yet though, as we have a Welsh tenor in the house for this evening's entertainment. With that, I make it time for bed as we glide ever closer to Vienna. Good night and I'll see you all in the morning. The next day. To give you an idea of how smooth our ship is, I didn't even realise we'd arrived during the early hours of this morning. Welcome to Austria. But before exploring, it's time to freshen up in the stunning marble shower. Goodness, isn't this just gorgeous? Now feeling a million bucks, let's continue the trend with breakfast in our suite. Dad has gone for his favourite omelette with fried potatoes, whilst I've opted for another Eggs Benny. All complemented with fresh cappuccinos. What a way to start the day. Sadly, this does see the end of our trip on board the Riverside Mozart. However, we have one last important piece to cover, the cost. The cost of the owner's suite was a total of 15,000 euros for the two of us. However, for transparency, I got this a lot cheaper. And this is down to a mix of booking early, as this is a brand new cruise, and I also managed to get a press discount, meaning this came to a total of 5,296 euros. Do bear in mind though, Riverside Cruises had no editorial control or indeed input to my review. So what you see is my honest opinion of the experience. You can of course book the penthouse room, which we looked at earlier for a fraction of the owner suite cost, or indeed the entry level room at €1,700 per person, including all of your food, drinks and excursions. Well, I'm happy to announce that we've arrived in Vienna, so welcome just outside the Vienna State Opera House. Dad, what did you think to our journey? Uh, yeah, it was great. It was great. I certainly don't need anything else to eat for another week. <laughs> yeah, I know. We have been incredibly well fed. But anyway, thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you all again next time.